morning when our younger, younger people are gone, so we will just kind of pass over that. But our scripture this morning is taken from Acts 2, one that we have heard every year, one that we're quite familiar with, but one that needs to be repeated. Because each time it sets deeper into our heart, into our memory, into our mind, and into our recall. So I'm going to start in Acts 2, 1, and we're going through to verse 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as fire appeared among them, and the tongues rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, Asia, Paraguay, and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In their own language, we hear them speaking the words about God's deed of power. And all were amazed, perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judah, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. For it is nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portions in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming and the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So ends the reading of our scripture. Heavenly Father, bring this alive to our hearts, alive now in these days. In those days, it is to be declared through thy Holy Spirit the things that are coming, but the things that are, are and how we are to live and worship and praise and proclaim the message of the gospel, Lord. Teach us as you taught that day, here this day. Holy Spirit, just fall in this place and on the family of God here. Use us mightily to go out and preach to others, even if they don't know our language personally. You will translate for us. For this we thank you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. The day of Pentecost, a day when the disciples were waiting around because Jesus had told them to tarry for a while because something was coming. And they tarried and they waited and they prayed and they talked and they visited among one another. What is coming? What are we waiting for? Some of them didn't wait so long they left. But that day in that room, they counted 120 where they were gathered at. And the Holy Spirit came in, not quietly. Not, it didn't sneak in. 
It came in in a roar, in a mighty rushing roar, because they heard it all over, not just where they were meeting at, but all over Jerusalem. They heard this wind that came in with such a roar, nobody could deny that it hadn't happened. And they all gathered to find out what was going on. We know in ourselves, if we hear a loud, loud explosion, we will look to see what is going on, to find out where it's at. This day, the Holy Spirit came in with force. We've had a lot of wind around us lately. Seems like almost every day, if it's not raining, it's wind or it's 80. And then there's a combination of all of those together. But that's not even close to being a mighty wind. That might be a slight breeze, but it's not even close to being a mighty wind. God wanted to get the people's attentions that day, that there was something different. God was here, Jesus Christ was here, and now it was he was turning loose the Holy Spirit on all the common, ordinary people like you and I. Not just those that were the followers of Jesus Christ at that time, but those that would learn to become followers of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. One of the things that our churches have lacked, we have forgot about the Holy Spirit. We have not preached the Holy Spirit. We have not put that to a test even to see what the Holy Spirit will do. And if I can ask most people to sit down and write down and tell me, what does the Holy Spirit do? Or who is the Holy Spirit? Or what is the Holy Spirit all about? We would struggle. We would struggle because we do not have it down to know. We have not studied about the Holy Spirit. We have heard about the Holy Spirit. But if the Holy Spirit is sent here down by God, He is sent here to be used. He is sent here to use us for the glory of God. But we don't see a lot of that in our world. We don't. The worst part is we don't see a lot of it in our churches either. There are gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. There's a fruit of the Spirit that He gives to all of us. And we would have a very difficult time trying to mark down exactly what they are. Agree? This morning, I added another piece of paper to your bulletin. I'd ask you to pull that out, please. This is just the beginning. And it just starts in the script. Each one of these scriptures tells us a little bit about the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, there are many, many in the Bible that we are going to go through some of this. So we have a better grip on our own self of what the Holy Spirit is. It starts in, anybody want to read the Matthew 28, 19? Please feel free to do that. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If you look under the underlying part, in this verse, it joins them together. They are not separate. It's in the name of the Father, it is in the name of the Son, it is in the name of the Holy Spirit. They are one complete union together. And we have to remember that. We just cannot leave off the Holy Spirit, which we really have been doing. We've really kind of left the Holy Spirit off to itself because we're not even quite sure what the Holy Spirit does. It's time that we learn what the Holy Spirit does. If you have to look at 1 Corinthians 13, 14, it still says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit join together. One. One. One God. In Hebrews, anybody want to read Hebrews 9, 14? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without Spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen. So what is the Spirit? Does He just come and then go and then you don't see Him anymore? The one word here, it says He's eternal. He's forever. 
He was in the beginning. He's through this whole middle time. He will be all the way through our life and the lives of other people to come. He is eternal, the same as God, the same as the Lord Jesus Christ. He is here forever. He's in our lives forever. On West. But at this point in time, he's in our lives forever. Uh, Todd, do you want to take Luke 1, 35? Um, omnipotent, unlimited power. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One who is, is to be born will be called the Son of God. Unlimited power. Do we know anything that has unlimited power? We know God has unlimited power. We know Jesus Christ has unlimited power. We know the Holy Spirit has unlimited power. He can go anywhere. He can touch any life. Like we find in, uh, when, with the Acts, with reading that, he changes languages of people. They spoke in languages that they knew that they did not know the language. And yet through the Holy Spirit, it changed the words so they could understand everything that they had heard, even in a different language. If somebody would come here in Chinese and speak Chinese, the Holy Spirit has a possibility of changing that in my heart that I would hear him speak in Chinese but know exactly what he's saying. The Holy Spirit is valuable to us. It is our valuable resource because he's the one that moves us. He's the one that teaches us and instructs us and guides us. He is also in Luke 1, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 11. Somebody want to try that one? The omniscient God knows everything, but it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things of which God has prepared for those who love him. Yeah, keep going. But God revealed them to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yet, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. He knows everything. He knows everything about us, but not only about us. He knows everything about everybody around the world. Through all the ages, he knows that. He knows everything. That should almost take our breath away. <laughs> that he knows absolutely everything. He knows the wisdom of God, the power of God. He knows the sources of God, the creation of God. He was there with God in the beginning when the world was created. The Holy Spirit has walked hand in hand with God the whole way through. He will never leave God, but he'll never leave us either. He knows everything. He knows everything about us. He knows when our hearts are short, but he knows also when our voices cry out, even if we say nothing, the Holy Spirit understands us. And he's omnipresent. I find this one amazing, that he is omnipresent. Psalms 139, 7 through 13. Ask these questions of yourself. Where can I go from your spirit? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as a day, and the darkness and the light are both a light to you. You formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. He is everywhere. 
We understand that he's everywhere when he's out around the world and he sees everything. But the part that even in my mother's womb, you were there. Before I took my first breath, the Holy Spirit was there. He has been in our lives, wherever we have been, He has been there. We cannot hide from Him, we cannot run from Him. We can run to Him. But there's no place that we can go. We can't hide in the darkness, it says, because to Him, it's not even dark. There is no place that we can hide from the Holy Spirit. The only thing we can actually do is tell the Holy Spirit we don't want Him. We can. Because God gave us that choice. He won't push. He gave the choice. But we do want Him in our lives. We want to see the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit come back into use again where the lame are healed and the blind see and those are raised up and sicknesses and diseases. But most of all, we want the Holy Spirit within us to sense the power of the Lord God Almighty. We want the Holy Spirit in us to feel the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, to understand and know what he is asking us to do, but mostly just to bow and worship and know that he is there in the worship. Know that when you call out his name, he is attentive and he is there. He is just waiting. We make it way too complicated sometimes in prayer. We want to sound right. Make it sound right. He's already read your heart. So you might as well just pour it all out and give. There is such amazing power in the Holy Spirit that we have not touched it for so, so long. We have just kind of left the Holy Spirit off to its own side. It is time to bring him back in and incorporate him where he's supposed to be with the Father and with the Son and the Holy Spirit, all three together in one. We almost divide. At first, when we first become a Christian, we talk a lot about God. And then we find Jesus Christ. And then we talk about Jesus Christ. And then we almost get to the Holy Spirit. Because we don't talk about what the Holy Spirit does. We don't talk about how he comes in to bless the life, to use us mightily to discern even the thoughts of other people, to give us visions and dreams, to walk alongside when we're suffering and when we're hurting. And we don't acknowledge him either. I'm just as bad at this as all of you. Okay? We gotta bring the Holy Spirit back in where he belongs. If we mention the Father and if we mention the Son, we have to mention the Holy Spirit because he's part of it. A powerful part of it. God created. Jesus Christ saved us. That was his position sent here by God, was to bring salvation to our souls. It is the Holy Spirit that takes us through that salvation and teaches us how to live the life that Christ and God have planned for us. It is the Holy Spirit who whispers in our ear, and talks over and over and tells us to stop some things and other things we should begin. We need to rely upon the Holy Spirit in order to change the face of the church, in order to change the face of our world. God is calling us. He has the church all the way through. But why is the church in such desperate straits? Why is the church failing? 100 churches in the United States alone close every week. How many? 100. The spirit of religion closes them. The church is the body of Christ. It was meant to be powerful and mighty for God. It wasn't meant to be huge buildings someplace. It was meant to be powerful 
and mighty for the Lord God Almighty. Back in to our fold. But we also need to acknowledge that he is already here. He is already here. But the next question to ask, or the next thing to ask him is, Holy Spirit, where do we go from here? What would you have us to do? Or what would you have us to be? Where do we go and how do we reach out? How do we love our neighbors? How do we watch for others? How do we discern where people need help? And what kind of help? It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that all these answers come. But it takes time to ask and to wait upon the Holy Spirit to guide and lead us. Today we celebrate upon Pentecost because of the rushing mighty wind. Lord, bring the rushing mighty wind through here absolutely every time we meet that we know that we are in your presence and we know that you are using us to bring glory and honor to the Lord God Almighty. We celebrate. We celebrate you, Father. We celebrate you, Lord Jesus. And we celebrate you, the Holy Spirit. And this we pray. In the power and authority of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.